we're going to take a look at how to solve a system of equations using substitution. So keep in mind the word substitute means to replace one thing, it could be a number in place of a variable, or it can be a whole expression in place of a variable. So since we're solving by substitution, we, we want to find one variable by itself or solve one of the equations for one variable. And then we can take what that variable is equal to and substitute it or put it in place of that variable in order to solve our system. Okay, so if we take a look at our two equations here, we have 2x plus y equals 3 and 7x plus 6y equals 3. Now what I want to do is take a look at those two equations and see which one I think is going to be easiest to solve for a variable. And I think the, e the easiest one to solve for a variable is going to be the top one. Now the reason I say that, if you look at this top equation, it says 2x plus y equals 3. So the easiest variable to solve for is y because it doesn't have a coefficient or a number in front. So it's just going to be a little less work to get that variable alone. Now if I really wanted to, I could solve either equation for x or y. So I have lots of options here, but I'm just trying to pick the easiest way that's going to make my math nice and short. So, so in this case, since I see y is close to being by itself since it doesn't have a coefficient, let's take this equation and solve it for y. Now whatever variable you're solving for, that's the variable that you're trying to get by itself. So if I want to solve for y, I want y to be the only thing on the left side of the equation. So to do that, I'm going to use my inverse or opposites to move the 2x to the other side. So notice it's a positive 2x. So my inverse or opposite would be to subtract 2x on both sides. Over here that cancels out and leaves me with just y. And over here I can write it as 3 minus 2x, or if I want it to look like slope intercept form, I can change the order and say negative 2x plus 3. But please notice I can't combine the 3 and the negative 2x because they're not like terms. One has the x in it, one does not. Okay, now that I have y is equal to negative 2x plus 3, this is where the substitution part comes in. Once I know what y is equal to, I can take the whole expression that y is equal to, in this case negative 2x plus 3, and I can take that and substitute it or put it in place of y in the other equation. So since this came from the top equation, I want to make sure that I'm substituting it into the bottom equation, and it can't go in place of x, it has to go in place of y since it was equal to y. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. When I rewrite that bottom equation, I'm going to say 7x plus 6. Now in place of y, I'm going to put this whole thing that y is equal to, the negative 2x plus 3. And make sure that you're using parentheses around it when you substitute. So that's going to say negative 2x plus 3. And then I still have my equals to 3. Now notice what this did. Now, instead of having an equation that has both x and y, I've got one equation that just has x. That's good because that's something that we can solve. So it is a little bit of a longer equation, so I want to take a look at it and think about order of operations. And I notice that I have a number in front of the parentheses. So before I add that 7x, I'm going to leave that alone. Leave that 7x out front, 7x plus. And what I'm going to do is distribute the 6 to both terms in my parentheses to get rid of those parentheses. Okay, so 6 times negative 2x, that's going to give me negative 12x. And 6 times 3, that's going to give me 18. And all of this is still equal to 3. Now from here, I'm going to combine like terms. 
I have 7x plus negative 12x. That's the same thing as just saying 7x minus 12x. And that's going to give me negative 5x. I still have the plus 18 equal to 3. From here, all of my x terms are on the left. That means I'm going to try to get all my numbers to the right. So the next thing I'm going to do is subtract 18 on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to say negative 5x. 3 minus 18 gives me negative 15. And then to get x by itself, I need to divide by negative 5 on both sides. And that's going to give me positive 3. When you look at your order, when you look at your answer choices, keep in mind all those answer choices are written as ordered pairs. So when you think about your ordered pair, it's always going to be x comma y. So the 3 would come first. So already, I think it's going to be the first answer choice because that's the only one that has positive 3 for x. But just to show you how we would finish this problem, because usually we need to find both x and y, what we would do is we would substitute again. Once we know that x is equal to 3, we can take that 3 and sub it in place of x in either original equation, and it doesn't matter which one, you can pick whichever one you want, and solve it for y. Now I think the top equation looks a little easier to work with, so I'm going to plug 3 in place of x in that top equation. When I do that, it's going to look like this. 2, instead of our x, we're going to sub in 3, plus y is equal to 3. 2 times 3 gives me 6, so our equation is 6 plus y equals 3. And then subtracting 6 on both sides, and that gives us y is equal to negative 3. And then what you do, once you know x and y, you write them together as an ordered pair. We just said the ordered pair is always x then y. So in this case, our x value is 3, and our y value is negative 3. So our solution is the point 3, negative 3. Okay, we're going to solve using substitution. So just like last time, I want to get one of the variables alone. Looking at these equations, I think the top one is going to be a little bit easier to solve for x. So let's take that top equation, x minus 2y equals 6. And to solve for x, I want to bring that negative 2y to the other side. Since it's being subtracted, I'm going to add. And that gives me either 6 plus 2y, or if I want to swap the order, I can say 2y plus 6. And notice x is by itself, right? This is now solved for x. And the reason that's helpful is once I know what x is equal to, I can take that whole thing that x is equal to and substitute it in place of x in the other equation. Since this came from the top one, I'm going to sub it into the bottom equation. Okay, so our bottom equation was negative 3. In place of x, I'm going to put 2y plus 6. plus 4y equals 4. And then I'm going to distribute. Negative 3 times 2y is negative 6y. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Plus 4y equals 4. We're going to combine our like terms. Negative 6y plus 4y gives me negative 2y. And 
And then from here, I'm going to add the 18 to both sides. That gives me negative 2y equals 22. Divide by 2, by negative 2. And that's going to give us y equals negative 11. Okay, so I'm going to scan my answer choices. And keeping in mind our ordered pair is always in the form x, y, there's only one choice that has negative 11 in the y position. So it has to be the, ch the top right choice over here. And again, if I needed to solve for x, if there was more than one that had that potential y answer, remember I could sub this number in for y and solve for x. But in this case, I already know it has to be this answer choice. Okay, solve using substitution. And I can choose either equation to solve for either variable. So let's take the top equation and solve it for x. I've got x plus 5y equals 3. To get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 5y on both sides. And that's going to give me x equals negative 5y plus 3. I'm going to take what x is equal to, and I'm going to substitute it or put it in place of x in the other equation. So this came from the top one, so I'm going to plug this into the bottom equation. So I'm going to rewrite that. Instead of x, I'm going to rewrite negative 5y plus 3 plus 2y equals negative 6. Now from here, in this case, I didn't really need those parentheses, so you can rewrite it without them. And then negative 5y plus 2y gives me negative 3y plus 3 equals negative 6. Subtracting 3 on both sides, negative 6 minus 3 gives me negative 9, and then dividing by that negative 3, I'm going to get positive 3. Okay, scanning my answer choices, there's only one that has positive 3 in the y position. So it has to be the bottom left answer choice. And if there was more than one, I could always sub 3 in for y in either equation and use that to solve for x. Since they're telling us to solve using substitution, I'm going to solve one of these equations for a variable, and it looks like the easiest way to do that would be to solve the top equation for x. To get x by itself, I'm going to add 3y to both sides. And that's going to give me 3y plus 8. I'm going to take what x is equal to, and I'm going to substitute that in place of x in the other equation. So that's going to give me negative 1. In place of x, we're putting 3y plus 8. And then I'm going to recopy the rest of the equation, plus 8y equals 7. When we go to distribute, I've got negative 3y minus 8 plus 8y equals 7. 
negative 3y plus 8y gives me 5y minus 8 equals 7. I'm going to add 8 on both sides. And 7 plus 8 gives me 15. Divide by the 5. And that's going to give us y equals 3. And there's only one answer choice with 3 in the y position. If there was, not, if there was more than one, I would sub that 3 in place of y and use it to solve for x. Solve using substitution. Now in this case, both of the equations are already solved for y. So the first step is essentially done for me. So what I can do is say, if this whole thing is equal to y, I can take that whole thing and put it in place of y in the other equation. So that's going to give me an equation that looks like this. Negative 3x minus 7 is equal to x plus 5. Okay, I want to get all of my x terms on one side. So let's add the 3x on both sides. That's going to give me 4x plus 5. And then I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides. And then finally, divide by 4. And there's only one answer choice that has negative 3 for x. Of course, I could substitute that negative 3 in for x to get my y if I needed to.